Hi everyone, my name is Tyler and this is Aftertouch Audio. Welcome back to the template series. If you missed part two and part one, uh, you can click on Crash's head over there and he'll kind of take you over uh, to the actual uh, playlist. But today we're going to be looking at Foley and we're going to break down everything that goes into this Foley. This one is going to be quite in depth, so let's get right into it. Okay, before we get started, if you would like to go ahead and support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description below where we have dozens of sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Opening up the Foley track, we now have a lot of tracks in here. There's there's more tracks in here than almost anything in the template. There's a lot more going on in this uh, template. Foley is actually divided up into three different sections. You have your feet, you have your props, and you have your cloth tracks. And they all have their own submasters, and they all have their own individual VCA tracks and stuff like that, and they all have their own audio tracks. But uh, it's it's important to keep in mind that having this level of organization really helps um, speed up a mix and helps be able to find things quickly. So keep that in mind. The routing for Foley and the amount of complexity that Foley has is probably going to be the biggest part of this template series solely because it's not routed in the way that you might think it's routed. But we'll kind of get through that here as we go. But let's get right into it. At the top of the track, you'll see a Foley master track. Uh, you'll also see a VCA track, and then you'll also see a Foley marker track. These are important to have. Again, they're across all of my actual templates, but uh, the VCA tracks are for feet, they're for cloth, and they're for props. So keep in mind, each one of those groups has their own VCA track. Let's open up the Foley Master, and I'll kind of show you what's on the actual Master track itself. And guess what? Nothing! <laughs> The Foley masters are, or most of my masters are pretty bare. Uh, they don't have anything on them other than maybe a true peak limiter. But the reason why this one does not have a true peak limiter is some of you might have noticed is it doesn't go straight to the master outs. The actual routing for the Foley tracks is they go from, you know, your Foley track to the Foley subgroup to the Foley master, and then they go actually to the SFX master. The SFX master has all of that stuff on it. Actually, I can go ahead and click on the SFX master for you right now, and you can see there's my ISL2 limiter on it. Um, so just keep in mind that is where the majority of, of the processing actually goes. And the reason for that being is when we go to create m &Es, which is your uh, music and effects tracks, um, ambience and Foley are all combined to make your um, effects tracks. Okay, let's start with the feed section of the Foley template first. So if I open up the feet master, you'll see that I have the same sends as I have across all of my other templates. I have the SFX room, the SFX hall, the SFX exterior, the SFX car, the SFX delay, and the SFX delay. And you'll notice these are SFXs, not Foley. Um, I, I didn't find there'd be any reason to go ahead and have a separate actual tracks for Foley. So I keep these here um, solely as um, SFX sends. And you'll see that in my Foley sections, they actually go directly to the SFX master as well. So they go from the full, uh, from the feet master to the Foley master to the SFX master. And like I said before, it is for M and E purposes. When you actually go to divide these out, when you need to create an effect stem, um, your effect stem includes your BGs, your Foley, and your sound effects. Moving through this actual template here, we'll go over to the actual effects. I have an Ava multiband compressor on it, and this is strictly on the feet section. Um, it's to kind of keep the actual uh, transients of the feet in check. Moving in here, this is actually the first instrument track I actually have in the template, and I have a lot of them. I have, I think, 14 total. Essentially, they're just the Edward Foley collection. Cannot recommend this collection enough. It has been in so many of my projects. It's super easy to perform. Um, effectively, what you can do with this is if I actually just come here and record on this track, I can now go ahead and use my MIDI keyboard to actually uh, walk my Foley in. I can change the feet. I can change the surface. I can change... Um, even the, down to the accessories of what people are, are uh, wearing. So if I actually come into uh, the cloth and prop track, which I have routed to the same MIDI input, um, I can actually change it from a nice shirt to a leather jacket, and maybe we want something like, I don't know, keys. I can mix these in, so we get a little bit of the keys and a little bit of the jacket, and for some reason we're having a little bit of issues there, but I can just move that down. So now when I go ahead and play, uh, you'll hear... We have a leather jacket walking with a set of keys, and I can change the speed on which people are walking all the way up to running, jumping, scuffing, landing, all that fun stuff is built in with this actual contact instrument itself. So I have 10 of these, um, uh, or uh, 12 of these in, imported into my actual tracks themselves, so they're, they range from all the way to here. And then I also have another set of contact instruments solely for animals. And we can go and do things like uh, paws or a skin, a saddle. We can um, do just like dog chain. So if you want to go ahead and build a like uh, dog, we can do a dog tag and we can turn the deck on, mix it in a little bit. So now when I... So 
So you can quickly go ahead and create a dog walking sequence or you can have them trotting or you can have them doing whatever. But yeah, um, super, super handy instruments for really quick workflows and stuff like that. I highly recommend this uh, collection. It, it really speeds up my workflow. Sometimes though, uh, the Edward Fuller collection does not have particular elements or particular feet that I need in order to get the scene cut. So I end up moving on to the actual audio tracks, which I have 10 of. And the reason for this being is if I need to go ahead and cut, for example, let's say um, we need extra elements to the Edward Foley stuff, I can actually go ahead and just lay these into the audio tracks. Or if a mixer that I'm delivering these stems to doesn't have the Edward Foley collection or the instruments that I'm using, I can actually just print those out onto stems and then drag them down onto my feet track and then deliver those audio tracks instead of the instrument tracks. Working with instruments and stuff like that, it's it's really hard to deliver things to people if they don't have those instruments as well. So you always need to render them out onto their own tracks or cut your own feet via uh, audio samples themselves. But if you would actually like a quick tutorial on how to go ahead and cut your own feet via contact, you can actually go ahead and visit uh, the card up there and it will take you directly to my contact tutorial as well. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at the routing here um, so you can guys can see how the routing on the feet work. So we go from each of the feet tracks uses the same uh, routing. We have the feet and then we have the feet master, the Foley master, the SFX master, and then they go to my uh, stereo outs as well. With that being said, let's move on to props. Prop master's pretty bare. Um, solely because I usually record a lot of my own props or I will go ahead and cut them from libraries and um, there's not a whole lot to perform. They're all super, super custom. It's not like feet where everyone kind of wears the same shoes. You can make an instrument based on that, but I can do things like mug ups or mug downs. They're easier to cut in than the artist to perform in via like an instrument or something like that, or you would just take your microphone and go do it that way. So effectively the props tracks are pretty bare. If I open up the group master, you'll see there's nothing on there. It uses the same effect stems. Um, it just goes to the prop master, to the Foley master, to the SFX master, to the stereo master. So that's effectively where all that goes. Sorry for the PlayStation text tone. Um, but then the actual prop masters themselves, um, again, is the same thing. They're just uh, mono audio tracks that don't really have any special significance to them. There's no plugins on them. They use the same sends as everything, and uh, the routing goes props to the prop master, to the Foley master, the SFX master, to the to my mains, right? So uh, the props are pretty easy to do. Uh, just cut them on mono tracks, and you should be good to go for those. So moving on to possibly my favorite part of this template is the cloth master. And I know that's such a weird thing to say. Cloth is such my favorite part of the template, but actually it's my favorite because for a couple of reasons, because it actually is a lot easier to, for me to work like this um, with four cloth tracks and a secret plugin that I um, use quite often in my mixes. So let's get into the first, the routing of the cloth master, and then I'll kind of show you the plugin. The inserts, there's nothing on it, uh, same sends, and then it goes cloth master, Foley, SFX, and then my stereo outs. But the actual cloth tracks themselves have something very fun on them. Same thing, everything's pretty much the same, except it uses an instance of Reformer. And what Reformer does is it takes an audio input signal and it converts that into anything. And effectively what I mean by anything is um, right now I have polyester movements and polyester scrubs on here and then I also have leather. So if I go ahead and record arm one of these tracks, I can go ahead and uh, speak into this actual track itself and it will change my voice to be something different. So if I go... See, so they got a polyester movement there, or if I come over to the leather foley. I can effectively watch the movement on the screen itself and perform with my mouth what that actually motion would sound like via um, an ADSR envelope. But this is a really quick way to actually cut cloth foley. And it means I don't have to go out and, you know, break out a ton of different cloth materials and stuff like that. If I need something super, super quick, like just a chair up or a couch up or something like that, and I just need someone leaning forward and a cloth movement there, I can just do that with a reformer and it's so fast. Okay, before I actually forget, I will throw up the graphic I have for the routing again. If you guys need to go ahead and just get a refresher on how everything's routed and what tracks I'm actually using, this is actually a great guide to do that with. Um, I, I really hope you did enjoy the tutorial on this. Foley is one of those things that is very much underappreciated and not uh, put in a lot of films and stuff like that. And I, I feel like no one has like a solid template for it, but this is a really good way to keep everything organized, keep everything um, <laughs> basically client safe. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one.